Hey folks, everything new under the sun. What you're looking at is my uh, signature solar EG4 3 kilowatt uh, uh, charge controller inverter. Um, this unit is basically running, uh, m you know, for all intents and purposes, my whole house, all my circuits, uh, lights, as many circuits as I could switch over. This is an off-grid system. It is not grid tied, so it does not push energy to the grid. And so this over here is uh, my panel. Um, that I have switched circuits over to from my house. So that 3,000 watts, I have to, uh, I had to kind of work with the circuits and kind of put the circuits on it that uh, I thought were necessary. So currently my well pump is not on it. Uh, but what I intend to do is get a secondary unit and do a parallel 3 kilowatt EG4 inverter configuration where I can do 120 volts and then 240 with the with each of them. So the split phase uh, option there. Now, the battery behind this is the Eagle 5 kilowatt battery. And uh, sorry about the wire, that is my solar assistant wire. I haven't uh, got, I need a longer network cable to, uh, to get that one uh, out of the way. But right now it is powered by that 5 kilowatt hour Eagle. Um, it's uh, Signature Solar's high end battery, I guess you'd call it. The, the higher end battery, the, it has a screen on it so you can see the amperage and such. Um, to be honest, if I were to do it again, I probably wouldn't get um, uh, the one with the screen on it. Um, let me just move you up there so you can have a better look. So there's a there's a look at it. Now it's hanging on uh, a ceiling rack or a hanging shelf. Um, this shelf holds about 500 pounds, and this battery uh, weighs about I think it's 100 pounds, 150 pounds. It is it is actually very heavy, um, uh, but it has been absolutely flawless. Um, I have intentions to make a DIY lithium ion phosphate battery out of raw cells from China. And I just did a, a video about um, actually this DALI BMS, which is a 16S 48 volt 250 amp Life, P, uh, Life PO4 uh, BMS. And so I would uh, be getting 3.2 volt cells and making that. So that's a future video um, that I'm going to make. Um, but uh, the one year review of this unit. As I say, I have uh, future expansion plans, uh, but I gotta say that this is uh, a super solid unit. I have had no issues with it, and um, uh, I haven't had to go to EG4 or Signature Solar support for it. Uh, but again, this supplies most of my needs on 120 volts. It is uh, powered or charged by a three kilowatt solar array, which again, uh, I have plans on expanding in terms of the uh, breaker box, I've got the panel over here. It is not a sub panel because it's not a sub panel of something else. It is an off-grid system. Um, so I have uh, basically both poles uh, in that panel uh, powered by the same inverter. So I can't do a 240 volts. I can't cross the poles and get 240. I need a secondary EG4 uh, converter. And this, uh, this inverter has been going for a solid year. Uh, it has been overtaxed, uh, you know, of more than 3,000 watts usage. Uh, it will um, uh, pull over 3,000 watts for, I think, five seconds. I think it's, what is it, three times the capacity of it, or, or two, sorry, two times the capacity of it for five seconds. But it hasn't tripped. Uh, we run significant inductive loads on it. I have been running well, my well pump on it. What I will notice is that uh, lights will flicker when large inductive loads like the... Uh, well pump comes on because it's about 2,000 watts uh, to start that well pump up and then it settles down to about 1,000 watts. Um, but it has worked flawlessly. Now one thing you will notice is all the dust. So I'm in a basement. Uh, you can see all the dust uh, build up here. I can get this and just you can see all the dust there. So there's a lot of dust coming through this thing. Uh, it is not a neat clean space. You can see some firewood over there because uh, this is also where my furnace is. So I've used this and used it hard, and it just works. I'll tell you that. Um, and the wires don't get hot at all. Um, you, they, they will get warm, uh, but they don't get hot. And I don't think it's pulling, like it's not going to pull the full 100 amps that um, that, that Eagle uh, Life Power 4 battery uh, is capable of. In terms of um, the logging, so I actually have... Um, 
not that it looks real pretty, but I have a little solar assistant uh, Raspberry Pi up there, the orange Pi, and uh, I need a longer network cable. Uh, but that goes up to my computer for local monitoring uh, over Wi-Fi and uh, directly, etc. And that that does all the logging. Uh, you can there is an app for this, uh, but the app is a Chinese-made app. It's kind of hard to understand, and of course, it's all cloud-based. And um, I, I don't have any interest in exporting my data uh, or having it necessarily uh, um, accessible at any time. Uh, so I chose to go the route route of uh, Solar System. So what I do plan uh, for this, and again. After one year uh, using this EG4, this has been amazing. I have, I'm a family. I've got three kids. Uh, we have uh, a, you know, a, a 2,000 plus square foot house. With all our lights, uh, electronics, uh, computers, I work from home. Um, this handles it quite well. Um, and I do have it plugged in um, to uh, the main panel here uh, to charge the batteries if there is no solar. So, uh, you know, it's not pushing energy to the grid, but it's uh, consuming energy from the grid uh, when, the, when there isn't enough power from the solar there, i.e. at night, etc. Now, I do have that single 5 kilowatt battery. Um, and that, you know, that battery is also flawless, you know, both from Signature Solar. So if you want to get any of these, definitely use my affiliate link. Um, I would appreciate that if you want to support the channel. So, and if you're going to buy one anyways, it doesn't increase the price. So use my affiliate link in the description of the video or in the, the comments there. Um, but uh, yeah, you can get these units and they work flawless. This, like I say, I've been running my house off this 100% of the time. Uh, on this, uh, through Hurricane Fiona, this kept my house going. Um, this kept all our critical uh, appliances going, uh, including a fridge. 1800 watt fridge and a freezer. Now I do need more battery capacity. The five kilowatts isn't ideal. You need to charge that every, have like a sunny day every day uh, uh, for it to work, uh, to keep up. But I will be building a, a 15 kilowatt battery, which then should uh, you know pr provide enough storage for me to collect during the day. So a large part of the problem is during the day my 3000, my three kilowatt uh, uh, array will charge the battery up, you know, until noon, and then the battery is full, and after that it just maintains, you know, the household load. So I don't have any place to put all the extra energy. So with um, uh, three kilowatts of uh, battery storage, I should have a place to kind of consume all of those 3,000 watt panels will provide, and uh, save even more money on my electrical bill. And so the payoff period, because this is not grid tied, and I don't have a particular agreement, uh, you know, from the, the, uh, the power company, the payoff of this is about probably 10, 15 years, uh, especially if you factor in the price of electricity. Whereas with a grid tie, uh, the payback is probably six, seven years. Um, so doing it yourself uh, is, is a good idea if you can, uh, because then you're not uh, tied down by government rules, regulations, uh, loans, you know, paying back, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can build it as you go instead of you know, putting you know, thirty or $40,000 down all at once on a system. You can kind of piece it together, one small battery, one small inverter, and then in a couple of years when you get a bit more money, put a second inverter, then you can do your split phase 240 volt option. And so that's what I intend to do. I intend to shift that over. Um, they're selling version two of that yellow EG4 unit, and three kilowatts still, but slightly modified. So I'll be getting one of those from Signature Solar um, over the next uh, number of months, hopefully. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then I'll be able to run uh, our hot water heater, which is electric, of course, and dryer on 240 volts. And then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, and uh, put one inverter on each of the poles of um, of the panel there. And uh, so that uh, effectively will run all my significant major loads. And then what I'll do is, uh, you know, the, the 240 volt uh, loads will be divided up across the two inverters, obviously. Uh, both putting out uh, 3,000 watts, which will probably max them out. Uh, ideally, I probably need maybe three or, or four of these inverters, but they're relatively cheap, about 574 US uh, for one of these. This is the lower cost ones. And again, every year you get income tax or something, you can plop another one up of these up on the wall, plug it into your battery, and all of a sudden you have uh, more capacity. Um, and nice thing about doing that piecemeal as well is if 
If this unit dies, if I have two of them going and this unit dies, then I take this unit off the wall. I buy a new one, but I, my house still keeps going on 120 volts with the secondary unit. Uh, whereas if you have an all-in-one 6500EX or, or an 18, 18K you know, uh, unit, if that unit dies, that whole unit dies and your whole house is down out of luck. Whereas if you get a bunch of these, you know, quote unquote cheaper units um, in parallel, um, then one goes down, you can just take it off the wall, um, ship it in for repair or buy a new one, uh, whatever it may be, uh, cross ship it, and, but your house is still going under 120 volts. So that's kind of the big uh, things, uh, that uh, big reasons why I like it. Very accessible to start. And also, uh, if a component fails, you can pull it out of the system and not completely tear, uh, turn off your whole house and your whole system waiting on a replacement part. So again, after a year review, uh, it's worked 100% flawlessly. Uh, I have not tripped it with uh, heavy loads. I've been surprised. It has lasted through hurricanes. Uh, it keeps going, uh, even with all the dust here. And it still looks nice. still looks nice and shiny here. And in my basement, I don't have to have any other cooling than its two cooling fans. So the cooling fans, I probably will have to kind of open this and do a bit of a dust spray, uh, dust it off uh, somehow to clean it up. But otherwise, uh, it's flawless. So I would highly recommend this and recommend this method of DIY where you get multiple smaller components and you can build them over time and learn and figure out what you're doing, make, make your mistakes on the small system, and then as you grow, you can parallel these and get your get your you know 6,000 watts per uh, per um, you know row on your your panel there or um, you know get your 240 volts uh, all while you're learning what you're doing while, while you're uh, making things better and cleaner and more efficient and uh, generally working on your setup so uh, there is my one year uh, review of the EG4 I guess ask me questions in the comments um, uh, let me know what you uh, what you think about them if you have them and if you've done a parallel setup That's kind of the next video that I hope to do if I can get a second one I, I'm working on getting a second one uh, from signature solar um, so that I can go ahead and move to the 240 volts um, by way of uh, Electricity expenses, so we pay about $200 right now for electricity. I I believe that this setup right now and, and, and it's really limited by the battery because it the battery can't store as much solar as I can collect. We're saving about $50 on our electrical bill. Um, so our regular electrical bill would be about $250 uh, as an example. Uh, but with the increase in electricity prices, that value is going to go up. There you can hear the uh, fans spin up. That's because a significant load has come online, you know, microwave, whatever it may be. Um, and, and there's a significant load now on it. Yeah, it's doing about 75% load uh, on the screen there so uh, and the, it's using all solar right now um, so yeah the I think the microwave is going and that's why it spun up so there you got a taste of how loud it is uh, uh, versus kind of a standby uh, just low load uh, situation so it does wind up but here in the basement you can't hear it anyways um, back to what I was saying about the electricity bills um, the rest of our electricity bill is a service fee which is about $30 Canadian uh, of that 200 left over and then the, the other you know 150 whatever it may be is basically the dryer clothes dryer and the hot water heating um, and uh, those are the other significant loads and if I can get that secondary parallel EG4 unit then I'm going to be able to do 240 and then supply you know maybe a third of the cost of the hot water and dryer or whatever percentage it will end up being I don't know yet. It's something I need to figure out by the time I get those parallel uh, items. You'll notice the uh, light flicker in the background uh, because I've got an LED here. The LEDs flicker a bit more. You notice them uh, when larger loads come on, and that's just a thing. And, and that's you know that's some uh, something common that you'd see um, in areas of you know where, where the electricity, uh, the actual grid, wasn't perfect in the first place, uh, and so you might see that when large components come online. So. Um, it doesn't seem to cause a problem. I do have a UPS on my computers and our sensitive electronics um, just to keep them safe. But you will see some of that with, with heavier loads coming online because this is a high frequency um, inverter, not a low frequency, which really handles those large inductive loads like uh, microwave or um, uh, you know the well pump, for example, uh, coming online. So there is a bit of a sag there. So uh, Let's see. I think that's it. There's nothing really to say about these batteries. Um, these batteries um, 
go forever. Uh, they're tanks. Uh, they work perfectly. Um, I will suggest that you probably don't need the top of the line, the most expensive batteries. You could probably go with the lower, uh, uh, lower ex you know, cost batteries that don't have the screens because at the end of the day, the screen is going to be on the EG4 unit. Uh, you're not going to be looking at the battery. The most, most of the thing I look at is the uh, three light indicator. So the state of charge indicator, and that's it. And then the other wire is just for, for communication to EG4. So I'll leave it there, guys. I hope, hope someone found that interesting and, and useful uh, for anybody who's looking at kind of uh, the long-term reviews of these EG4s. I would buy this again in a, in a second, in a heartbeat, and I will be buying a second one, the version 2 that they have out now, which is all they sell. I'll be getting that to parallel with this one for my 240 volts. So stay tuned for that one, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll get another video up for it. So we'll see you in the next video.